Good morning and happy Sabbath to all of you. There are so many children here this morning. I did not forget you. But I will not start the sermon today with the story. But there will be a story for you coming up later. Children are very close to my heart. So I cannot forget you. So I get And with the stories, I will be showing you a lot of pictures today as well. Let's bow our heads to pray. Our most gracious Father in heaven. We thank thee for this wonderful Sabbath day. As we have gathered here to worship you, we invite your presence to be with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. As I was thinking and praying about a topic for today, I considered completing my testimony that I started when I was preaching last time. But in a very strong way, God impressed on my heart to talk about the great commission that is given to us in Matthew chapter 28. And I want to link this commission with the mission trip that we recently concluded in the Philippines. And if we look in this text, Matthew chapter 28. These are last few verses in the Gospel of Matthew. After resurrection, Jesus made an appointment with his disciples to meet them in Galilee on top of a mountain. And as, and as they met there, Jesus spoke to them. And what he said, we will start from verse 18 of Matthew chapter 28. It says there, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. If we summarize these verses in a few words, words that are commonly understood in modern era, we can say that Jesus was telling to his disciples, go on a mission trip. And mission trips don't always have to be far away from where you live. They can be right around the corner where you live. They can be in your neighborhood. They can be in your own country. In your community. But of course, when... The commission says this. And there Make disciples of all nations. It also opens doors for us to travel far away to preach the word of God. 
dyr fyrir okkur að fara í, og til annara landa og til og hérna boða And when God Guð. opens these doors for us og þegar Guð opna þessa dyr all we need to do is to place ourselves in the hands of God að þá þurfi við eingungu að setja okkur í hendur Guðs and he will accomplish mighty things through you og hann mun gera mikla hluti gegnum þig Though the commission is recorded in the New Testament og uh, þessi skipun eða þetta boð er skráð í Nýja testamentinu We can find numerous examples even in the Old Testament Þá finnum við fullt af dæmum líka í Gamla testamentinu where God sent his servants on mission trips Þar sem að Guð sendi þjóna sína í trúboðsferðir And if we look in the Old Testament og við kíkjum í Gamla testamentið Let's first look at the New Testament yes. where God sent his disciples on mission trips. Þeir skulum við líta á Nýja testamentið þar sem að að Jesú eða Guð sendir lærisveina sína. If we look at the list of his disciples, við skoðum listan yfir lærisveina. If Andrew, he was a missionary to Bulgaria and Greece. Andres, hann var trúboði í Bulgaríu og Grikklandi. Bartholomew was a missionary to India and Georgia. Bar Bartholomeus, hann fór til Indlands og Georgíu. And James, son of Zebedee, he was a local missionary in Jerusalem. Og Jakob, sonu Zebedeusar, hann var trúboði í sínu svæði í Jerusalem. And Matthew traveled all the way to Iran to Mark be a missionary there. Matthews fór alla leið til Iran. And Simon Peter, he was in Italy and Asia. Og Simon Peter, hann fór til Ítalíu og Asíu. And Thomas was in Afghanistan as well. Thomas var líka í Afganistan. And Matthias was a local missionary also in Jerusalem. Matthias hann var í í hérna í Jerusalem. And then when we look at the Old Testament, og svo við kíkjum á Gamla testamentið. And many of the messengers of God were given commission to go and do a specific task. Og margir skil eh sendiboðar Guðs voru sendir til þess að að vinna eitthvað ákveðið verkefni. If we look at a few of them, Ef við lítum á nokkur þeirra, like Abraham, Abraham Moses, Moses, Ezekiel, Ezekiel Hosea, Hosea, Isaiah, Yesaya, Micah, Mika, Jonah, Jonas. All of these were messengers and missionaries of God. Allir voru þeir sendiboðar and when we look at the, Guðs. And when we look at these names, they were great people of God. Þegar við lítum á þessu nöfn þá voru þetta miklir menn Guðs. They accomplished great things for him. Gerðu þau stóra hluti fyrir Guð. But were they all ready to accept the call of God when God called them? Voru þeir allir tilbúnir að taka við kallinu þegar Guð kallaði á þá? No. Nei. Some of them felt they were not ready to take on the challenge that God was asking them to. Sumum þeirra fannst þeir bara alls ekki vera tilbúnir að takast á við þetta verkefni. They thought they were not skilled enough. Þeim fannst þeir ekki nógu hæfir. They thought that they are not qualified to do the things that God wants them to do. Þeir höfðu ekki fengið þjálfun til þess að gera það sem Guð hafði. They were afraid as to what might happen to them if they start doing what God is asking them to do. Og þeir voru hræddir við hvað myndi gerast fyrir þá ef þeir fara að gera það sem Guð bara. So they did not want to have anything to do with what God was asking them to do. So þeir vildu bara alls ekki gera það sem Guð bað á um. For example, Moses. Til dæmis Moses. He made excuse after excuse to get out of what God wanted him to do. Hann kom með afsakanir eftir afsakanir til þess að komast frá því sem hann var beðinum. Then another example is Jonah. Og Jónas. God asked him to go to a certain place. Við bannum að fara á hvern stað. But he started going towards the opposite direction. En hann fór í hinn áttina. But at the end, when these men had accomplished what God wanted them to do, and á endanum, þegar að þeir höfðu náð að gera sem Guð bað á um, they had humbled themselves before that task. Þá voru þeir orðnir auðmjúkir fyrir þessu verkefni. They had placed themselves in the hands of God. Þeir höfðu sett sjálfa sig í hendur Guðs. With all their shortcomings. Með öllum sínum verkefni. Even if they felt they were not qualified to do what they, they were asked to do. They just placed themselves in the hand of God. And they became the greatest missionaries of all time. Recently, 
we had a few missionaries go from this church to the Philippines. Og nýlega þá höfum við nokkra trúboðar sem fóru hérðan til Filippseyja. And you as church members supported their travel to the Philippines. Og þið hinn stuttu þau til þess að fara. And I am very happy that these missionaries did not look at their shortcomings. Og ég er mjög glaður við því að þessir trúboðar, þau voru ekki að hugsa inn á við og hugsa hvað þau gætu ekki gert. They did not feel that they are not qualified for this job. Þau hugsaði ekki að þau gætu ekki gert þetta. But they just placed themselves in the hand of God. They just wanted God to use them where he is calling them. And at this time, I'm going to call a couple of them to come and tell us about their experience. Stefania is going to come. Steffi. And... I Jana don't see Jana is not yeah. here, so I'm going to ask my wife to take her place. So They're going to tell us. They're going to tell us about their experience. And what this meant to them. And how it was to be a missionary in Philippines for a few days in their journey with God. Trúboði í fyrirbúsegjum á þessu ferðalagi sínu með Guði. Góðan daginn, gleður hann kvildadag. Good morning and happy sabbath. Já, Jana, hún datt í gær og er smá meitt. Þess að hann kom, kallar hann ekki kom meitt. Jana er injured, she fell yesterday. Oh, sorry about that. Já, þessi fer var bara Ólýsanlegt. It was undescribable. Og eins og hann sagði, ég í byrjunum var smá hrætt um hvað ég átti að fara að gera þarna. So like Maxa said, I was in the beginning where ég much afraid of what I was going to do. En svo kom þetta. And then it just happened. Ég var ekki lengur hrætt og... I wasn't afraid. Og ég bara... Já, þetta bara geðist. It was just amazing. Já, þetta í byrjunin eins og með hjálp ykkar, það var það sem ég gat farið. Because of your help, I could go. Ég var, þetta var líka svo, þetta var svo stórt verkefni, maður er nýbúin að úskrifast og maður er ekkert að, þetta kom bara allt í einu, þetta var bara... For me, I had just graduated from high school and it just happened, it just came into my hands. I wasn't really planning. Og með hjálp ykkar, sem þið viti hvert þið eru, takk fyrir að þið hjálpur. And with your support, you know who you are, thank you. Þetta var hægt að fara það og ég myndi fara aftur. And I would go again. How did you feel you, in your journey with God, over these few days there? And then lay there. And even after that. And then lay there further lay. Mér leið bara ópaslega vel. Það var bara, maður var bara, maður fór að sofa og maður var bara spendur til að vakna til að fara aftur að gera það. I had a very good feeling. You just went to bed and you were exciting for the next day. Og maður var bara spendur að fara að gera aftur og aftur og bara hjálpa þess að börnum og maður bara vaksir svona lærir á svona hlutum og maður sér hlutunar heima öðruvísi út að So it was exciting to help and you grow with experiencing something new and you see the, your homeland with different, different eyes So já það var uh, hjálpa mér að uh, vaksa sem manneskja So it helped me grow as a person og líka sambandi að milli mín og Guðs. And it strengthened my relationship with God. Því ég hélt að það væri ekki hætti byrjunin og svo hann bara gerði allt, ég þurfti ekki að gera neitt. I thought it wasn't possible, but he did it all. I didn't have to do anything. I see you have something in your hand. Would you like to show the church? Með eitthvað hérna? Þetta var ból sem við fengum. It's a t-shirt that we got. Hérna eru nöfnum að mest af börnunum sem ég var með allan tíma. That's the name of the children that I was working with. Og 
Já, ég náði ekki að fylla bólinn, það var, það hafði eru glöð verið hægt. <laughs> Couldn't fill the t-shirt, but... En já, það, það eru svona skilabóð sem þeir sögðu, því ég var alltaf grátandi þessi sögðu. Because I was always crying. <laughs> <laughs> þeir sögðu cheer up. So they were cheering me up. Já, mm-hmm. svona minningar sem hjálpa maður að, að, já, að minna að það sem maður gerir og hvað sem er hægt að gera. So it's memories to help you treasure what you... Thank you, Sophie. Yeah. I have to speak in English, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, every time I go back to the Philippines... Alltaf þegar ég fer aftur heim til Philips, ja? I always uh, see myself in their position. Þá sé ég alltaf sjálfum mig í þeirra aðstöðu. Uh, the hardships. Erfileikarnir. Uh, that was the path I had before. Þetta var það sem ég hafði áður. And God changed the direction of my life. Og Guð breytti stefnunni í mínu lífi. Uh, all I had to do was to trust him and give him my life. Eina sem ég þurfti að vera gera var að trista honum og gefa honum líf mitt. And uh, when I go back there, fer til baka, uh, it gives me um, a joy knowing that uh, I can reach out to them. Og það gefur mér gleði að vita að ég get tengst þeim og tekt mig til þeirra. Um, it gives me courage. Gefur mér hugur ekki. Not to be afraid when God calls me. Að vera ekki hrætt þegar þú kallar á mig. That's the main reason I'm here. Er ástand, ah, fyrir I came er. back. Ég kom til baka. Because God strengthened me. Guð mig. Uh, the same uh, feelings I had when we had to go to America. Sama þegar við að fara til it's not easy for changes to happen in your life. Það er ekki þegar er but when you placed your hands in his, in God's hands, your life in God's hands. He changes the scenario of your life. Uh, and that's why I feel like uh, God is equipping each one of us. In every situation we are in, as long as we acknowledge him, so lengi sem að við finnum og, og hérna, að tökum hann með. That uh, he is our Lord. Hann er okkar drottin. And that's a very big word. He is the master of your life. Það er stórt orð. Hann er mistarinn í leiðtóginni í þínu lífi. That changes everything in me. Og það breytir öllu í mér. Praise God. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to show you a lot of pictures. Nú ætla ég að sýna ykkur fullt af myndum. And some of these pictures you may have seen before. Sumar myndana hafið þið kannski séð áður. But I'm going to show them again to, sína er aftur. to let you see how the mission trip actually progressed. Ég ætla að leifa ykkur að sjá hvernig þessi trúp og þessi trúp og sferðir hafa Throst. Okay, this was in March. Þetta var í mars. And our theme of the week was who am I? Og þema vikunar var hver er ég? And in that theme we had topics like courage, forgiveness, integrity og, and love. Og við höfðum þessi þessi hérna efni, hugrekki, fyrirgefning, uh, integrity, það er uh, Tröstur eða, já, að gera það sem er rétt og kærleiki. And as the team arrived in the Philippines, þegar að hópurinn kom til Philips eiga, we took another flight from Manila to get to Bacolod where we were supposed to have this mission. Þá flugum við frá Manila til Bajanis sem þú vorum fara. Bacolod, yes. <laughs> And first, after a long flight, Fyrst eftir langt flug, we all know we have taken long flights, we get so tired. Og við því sem að langt flug, er we, mjög þreytandi. I took the group to a resort. Og fór ég með á hotel. Where they spent uh, uh, 
almost a uh, day and a half, couple days to refresh themselves. We had hikes in that resort. Climbed up to see the seven falls in that resort. And uh, before arriving to the last fall, we were all tired. All of us took a coconut drink. This was the last bridge before we uh, arrived to the seventh fall. And this was the seventh fall where they had a dip in the water. And on our way back, we came over the, from the other side, over a mountain from where we could see a beautiful views of the uh, countryside there. We had a butterfly garden in that resort. Steffi was a little bit afraid first of the butterflies. And this is the beautiful view in the resort. This is the Icelandic group. We separated ourselves just to take a picture. Uh, while we were in the resort, we spent a lot of time discussing and praying. Praying to God that he will prepare our hearts and prepare us for the task that he has for us on this mission trip. And after getting refreshed, the team heads towards the mission. mission we used many means of transportation, out of which we had a van and a truck. But the most popular transportation was tricycads. So we traveled back and forth from our place where we were staying to the place where we were eating and to the school. So we traveled back and forth from our place where we were staying to the place where we were eating and to the school. And as we arrived at the school, the, the team was welcomed with traditional dances. So we were welcomed with traditional dances. So we were welcomed with traditional dances. So we were welcomed with traditional dances. And students performed very well. And at the end of the program, the team was given time to get to know the students. They made friends. And the next day, the mission work began. We used to come together morning and evening to talk about the day that we have already spent. And prepare for the following day. So this is place, the place where we used to sleep. There are rooms there. And this was our first day. Every morning we used to have a worship with everyone. And topic, topic of the day was discussed. And and health tips were given. How to? Health tips. Yeah, uh, all sorts of And stories from the Bible were dramatized so people could understand what we are talking about. And stories from the Bible were dramatized so people could And after that, we divided into small groups for discussions. And so after that, we divided into small groups for discussions. So everyone discussed the same topic in small groups. And all of us talked about the same in little groups. So you can see a lot of groups we had. See all of these groups that we were in. And then, in other than this, we had other activities as well. So we were all kind of work up there like. We had music classes. Tonlista. Students are being taught how to read music, keep the rhythm. This was very popular, ukulele. And our missionary from here, Jana, became a very famous part of this group. We, we had ukuleles and we started give, they started giving lessons to the students. 
Vi var med i Ukulele och där våra känna krockarna. And we had sports activities with the students as well. Då var det idrotta leker lika. And we had computer classes with them. Och vi var med 12 timmar. Arts och såna lister fönster. And then we had visitations. Och så fick vi hemsökningar. We visited a couple of schools in the neighborhood. Ja, vi får med hemsök till några skolor i kring. We presented to them uh, the stories from the Bible and prayed with them. Og vi hérna lekum sögur og sögum sögur frá Biblíunni og báðum með þeim. We visited homes of our students. Við heimsóttum heimili nefndana. Prayed with their families. Báðum með fjölskyldunum. Sang in their homes. Við sungum á heimilunum. Which was a wonderful experience. Sem var alveg dásamlega reynsla. And in between all of these activities. Inn á milli. We had time to spend with each other, talk to each other and get to know. Höfum við tíma til þess að vera saman og kynnast. Play with the students. Leika með krökkunum. Make new friends. Og eignast nýja vinni. Have some good food as well. Eigna, eh, fá góðan mat. Some of you may recognize the young lady with Steffi. Hanna Macy sem er þarna með yes. Steffi. And we also enjoyed coconut drinks. Og kokos. Saven, kokosmjölkina Went to the local markets. Fórum á markaðina. Bought some fresh fruits. Skiptum ferska ávaksti. And the last evening in that school was very special. Síðasta kvöldi í þessu skóla var mjög sérstakt. We had organized a commitment activity. Við höfum skiplagt svona ákvörðunar leik. At the end of the program. Og í lok dagskrórinar. Gavin presented a challenge to all the students and staff. Að þá kom gafin með áskorun fyrir nefndur og starfsfólk. Ask them who would like to have a closer walk with Jesus. Og hann spurði hver þeirra vildi eignast svona nánara samband við Jesus. And we were so happy that all of them wanted a closer walk with Jesus. Og við vorum svo happy að þau vildi það öll. And then at the end it was goodbyes. Og svo lokum þá þurftu við að kveðja which are always very emotional. Sem er alltaf mjög tilfinningalegt. And this is the group, the whole group there. Þetta er allur hópurinn. And now, after looking at what we have done in our last mission trip, Svo núna eftir að hafa litið á það sem við búin að gera, I just want to present the future opportunities that we may have. Þá langar mig til þess að deila með ykkur framtíðar áhallinum sem við höfum. And we are actually looking at two possible mission trips. Við erum að skoða tvær hérna ferðir. One is in Pakistan. Ein er í Pakistan. And many of you are supporting the work in Pakistan as well. Mörg ykkar er að styðja starfið í Pakistan. This is the school. Þetta er skólinn. There are girls, hundreds of girls and boys there. Hundruður af stelpum og strákum. There is a very big need there in Pakistan. Þarna er mikil þörf. For those hundreds of children we have a clinic that is a small room. Fyrir þessi mörg hundru börn að þá erum við með pínu líti herbergi sem er svona heilsu. A health practitioner comes every day to check the students who are who need help. But if you look at the room, it is very old and breaking down. So we are thinking of making a new clinic for hundreds of students there. So we are thinking of making a new clinic for hundreds of Two wards, one for boys and one for girls. Og þarna höfum við þá herbyggi fyrir börnin að þeirru veik að vera í eitt fyrir stelpur og anna fyrir stráka. We are going to look at the possibilities of fundraising for this. Og við erum að leita að leiðum til þess að safna fyrir þessu. Hopefully it will look like this when you are done. Vonandi getur þetta leitið svona út. So that's one possibility. Það er eitt möguleiki. The other is again going back to the Philippines with a group. Og Annar möguleiki er að fara aftur til Filipseja. And this will be for a vocation Bible school. Og þetta verður svona bibliufrí skóli. Which will also be based on the same topic that the group from USA will be there before we arrive there. Svo það verður byggt á því sama og hópur frá bandaríkjanum mun vera með áðurinn að við munum koma. And we are trying to combine this mission trip with your vocation time. Svo við erum að reyna að tengja þetta við fríið okkar. 
And we, we are planning on having some activities which you will enjoy, like being in a resort. So we are going to skip like a and I'm sure you will like to be on a warm beach. And also we will uh, be able to see if we go during the Easter time, the last seven days of Christ's life dramatized on Good Friday. All of these things we can do along with carrying on the mission that God will give us to do in the Philippines. We are, we are thinking of time either during Easter break or in June. So we have heard how it, the mission trip impacted the missionaries from here. What kind of impact do we leave behind? That is the next question. And in order to share with you what kind of impact we leave behind, I'm going to tell you a story. Now it's children's time. If you look at this slide, you can see a young boy with the blue ball on the other end. He is, his name is Mark. And he used to be the notorious child on campus. He used to be the notorious, the always causing trouble. And many times I had to tell him I'm watching you. But there is a very special quality about this boy. Which I did not know. If you see that there is another island on the other side where we went also to visit our students. There is a big space which you have to cross with this boat. One evening, we were going to show a movie to all the students. And these students did not want to miss the movie. And the last boat that goes to the other side goes at 8 o'clock. So some of the students from the other island decided they want to stay back and watch the movie. And by the time it was done, it was late. Around 9 o'clock at night. They went to the shore. No boat. What are they going to do? A thought came to this boy's mind. Mark. He said, he's at, at, at at night that he is going to swim across to the other side. And he asked his friends to stay back. And there is a boat on the other side. And he is going to bring that boat back. And take his friends to the other side. And that's exactly what he did. At night, dark. He swam across this channel, went to the other side, brought the boat back, took his friends with him so that they could have a good night's rest. Next day when he came to the school, he was very sick. He had high fever. We were informed immediately about it. We had a doctor with us. We attended to his needs. And he got better. But when you look at his actions, he was not afraid of his, for his life. He was not afraid for his life. He did not care about his safety. 
Hann var ekkert að spá við hvort hann væri öruggur. He could have drowned. Hann hefði getað drukknað. He could have hurt himself. Hann hefði getað meitt sig. But no. He sacrificed, went across the channel swimming so that he could help his friends. Hann bara hugsaði um hvernig hann geti að hjálpa vinum sínum. In John chapter 15 verses 12 to 14 it says, Og í Jóhannes verður, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that, that he lay down his life for his friends. Mark in this story showed Christ-like love. He put, he put his life in danger so that his friends could get home and have a good night's rest. He could have drowned but he did not care about his safety because he wanted to help his friends. I'm sure Mark saw how much the missionaries that had come there loved him. These missionaries had traveled from far to share with them to tell them about Christ's love and to reflect his love through their actions. So he must have seen Christ's love through the lives of these missionaries. So he wanted to do the same thing for his friends. This is the kind of impact these missionaries have left behind. You don't have to preach a sermon. Or conduct a Bible study. Or teach any specialized skill. It's good if you can. But whatever abilities you have. God just says... Place yourselves in my hands. And when we do that, he will use us in a mighty way. No matter how small or big our qualification is, God can use us. There was one student missionary from the U.S. on this trip. One day my wife and I, we found her crying bitterly. We were, we were worried. So we called her to one side. And we asked her what happened. And when she started talking, she said, I'm not making any difference on this mission trip. I'm, I'm not able to contribute anything. So I feel so bad in myself. I want to do something. I want to contribute something. It seems like I'm not making any difference. And I had noticed her for a couple of days. She was the life of the group in whichever she was. She used to make people laugh around her. Everybody around her used to be very happy. No dull moment around her. And I looked at her. And I said, I said, do you know that, that you are the life of everyone around here? Wherever you are, there are smiles, there are laughters. People are happy. Isn't that what God is using you for? 
You don't have to preach a sermon. Du får inte att predika säger bara. You don't have to conduct a Bible study. Du får inte att läsa Bibeln. Maybe God has brought you here just to put smiles on the faces of the people that you encounter. Kanske är det att Gud har bara till så för folk till att prosa. So don't think that you are not making a difference. Så äcke hugsa om att du skiftar en god måle. Place yourself in the hands of God. Sätt bara själv i händerna på Gud. Tell him you want to be used. Säg då när man får vilt att nå till dig. And go out there. Og farið þið bara út. And be natural. Og verðið bara þú. And you will see that God will make a lot of difference because of you. Og þú munt sjá að Guð hann, það verða alveg áhrif af því sem Guð gerir með þig. And as we observed her later on. Og við fylgdust með henni setna. Not a single teardrop. Að þá kom ekki fleiri tár. She was a happy missionary. Hún var glaður trúbóði. And she was making everyone happy around her. Og hún gerði alla glaða kringum sig. If you want to be a part of one of the mission trips, I have some interest forms which will be with either Stephanie or Judel or we'll put some in the back. Just give us that information on that page. And then we will organize mission trips. And as soon as we can have this information, we can start organizing. My purpose of telling you these stories today is this. If God has given us a chance to share his love to anyone around the world or even in our neighborhood, Hvar sem er, jafnvel heima hjá okkur eða annars staðar. Let us not be shy. Ekki vera feimin. Let us not hide ourselves away. Ekki fel okkur. And don't feel that you are incapable. Og ekki finnast þú ekki geta. Don't look for big qualifications. Heldur ekki leita einhverju svaka stóru. Once we place ourselves in the hands of God. Þegar við treystum Guði. He will be. He will give us the strength, courage, and the wisdom to do what to do what He wants us to do. Til að gera það sem hann vill að við gerum. So don't look at yourself when you are deciding if you want to go on a mission trip or not. Ekki líta á ykkur sjálf þegar að þeir eru spáði kvarta að þeir vil geti farið í svona ferðir ekki. Just look at God, what He can accomplish. Horðu til Guðs og hugsaðu hvað hann getur gert í gegnum okkur. May God bless each one of us. May Guð blessa hvert og eitt okkar.